Last week was kind of a big deal for OpenAI. Sam Altman, the CEO of the company, organized the first ever developers conference where he announced some of the new features and functionalities coming to ChatGPT. Some of those are already available as we speak, whereas the rest of them will come at a later date in time. Now, I'm not going to list out all the different new capabilities of ChatGPT in this video because I'll create a separate one with a summary of that event at some point in the future. Today, however, we're going to be focusing on one of the bigger features, which is called GPTs. GPTs are essentially very specific chat GPTs, which are tailored and fine-tuned to a specific use case where they act as experts in their own fields. Well, depends how you set them up, but that's the plan. So today we're going to have a look at a couple of GPTs which are already made available and hopefully we'll create one of our own. So let's jump straight into ChatGPT as usual and we'll have a deep dive into this new feature. As you can see, the user interface hasn't changed much since the last time we've seen ChatGPT. However, there are a few subtle changes that you might realize. For instance, instead of having a switcher at the top of the screen where you can select between ChatGPT 3.5 or 4, now we don't actually have to specifically make that change because ChatGPT will determine which version of ChatGPT we should be using based on our question. So if the question is simple, I guess it will give us 3.5. And if it's something a little bit more complex, it will switch us over to ChatGPT4. And furthermore, if we want to generate an image, it will add the DALI 3 plugin so that we can generate those images. Also, if we need to access the web, that's been an option for a little while, but now it's given to us automatically. So whenever we ask, for instance, for the weather for tomorrow in a specific location, it will do a web search for that information for you. But to discover the GPTs, which we'll be talking about, let's click the Explore tab on the left-hand side, and you should see a list of options in that new screen. At the time of recording, I see a sous chef, a media mentor, DALI, data analysis. And if I scroll down a little bit, I see some further options like the negotiator, tech support advisor, and a few more. So for our first little demo, we're going to have a look at Game Time, which is a GPT which is built to explain board games and help us get started with playing games. Once you click into the GPT, you'll see that just as in a standard chat GPT instance, you will have four example queries that you can ask. In the case of Game Time, you'll see how do you set up the board to begin? Can you explain how to play this game? We are arguing about a rule, who's right? And are there any common variations? As we'll learn later, you will be able to specify custom example queries when creating a GPT. But this time we're going to be learning how to play one of my favorite games, which is Carcassonne Safari which if you haven't played before, I highly recommend. It's a really fun and simple game to play. So let's have a look at what Game Time GPT gives us. And as you might expect, it gives us a comprehensive instruction on how to play Carcassonne Safari, written in a format which should be easy to capture in just a few minutes. So instead of going through the instruction manual, which is sometimes 20 pages long, you just have a short output. And if there's anything unclear, you can continue the conversation with Game Time GPT in this case. In the next example, I want to show you one of the plugins that ChatGPT uses for the specific GPTs. And the plugin will be DALI 3, which we'll probably have another discussion about in another video because it's quite a broad topic. And image prompting is a whole new art, which we haven't had a look at in this channel yet. So we'll select the color book hero, which generates coloring book pictures based on our prompts. In this case, what I'm going to ask it to draw is myself doing what I'm doing right now. So sitting at my laptop and recording a YouTube video about the new features in ChatGPT. And as you can see, we have this little purple indicator, which shows that we're invoking a different service to help us with the request. This one is called creating images, which under the hood is just DALI 3, which is another one of OpenAI's tools. So after a little while, we should see a generated image. And there you go, black and white as we expected, because it's supposed to be a coloring book picture. And it also comes with a little description uh, below just to tell you what you're looking at. So that was our second example of a GPT. Let's move on to the third one. And this one is going to be with a little twist because we're going to try to reverse engineer it to see what a GPT is under the hood. So we'll choose something simple like the mocktail mixologist and we'll ask a question of how to prepare a virgin mojito. So yeah, it works. It gave us the instructions. It gave us the tips. And what we'll do now is ask 
our mocktail GPT what it is under the hood because what I'm suspecting is that GPTs are nothing really new to us. I feel like really they are just custom instructions with a couple extra features added to them which we've spoken about in a couple of previous videos which I'll link up somewhere above again as always. Um, so what we'll do is ask what custom instructions are set for our mocktail mixer and as you can see it's actually responding with some valid data. So it tells us here's what I'm all about, mocktail recipes, ingredient insights, fun and inspirited voice. So that really looks like role assignment and priming which we used for custom instructions in the past. But let's keep on digging. Let's ask what other ChatGPT features are being used by the GPT model. And there we go. We've got the image generation, custom instructions as expected, interactive and engaging style, inclusive and diverse responses. Not much of a tool, but fair enough. And let's just find out if this specific model is hooked up to the internet, which is a possibility with GPTs. But it seems like this one is not. All right, so we're getting somewhere. So now that we know what uh, GPTs are under the hood, let's create our own one and come to a conclusion about this new tool. Let's go back into the Explore tab of ChatGPT and click the first option of creating a GPT. We'll be greeted with a wizard, which will guide us through the process of generating our very own GPT or agent. So it will start off with asking us about who the agent will be. And in our case, we'll be creating a travel agent. So we'll answer with create a tour guide who will help me with my travel planning and ideation. And ChatGPT invokes one of the tools for generating. And once it's done, it shows us a name for our agent, which it calls globetrotter guide, which I will accept. That's all right. And the next thing is it's going to invoke DALI 3 again, which we've seen in the previous demo, uh, which will generate an avatar image, which this time it's a picture of the globe with a bunch of landmarks around it. And I will accept that one as well. Next, it's going to ask me to give a bit more detail on what we expect from the GPT. And in the case of a travel agent, I'm going to ask it to answer questions about flight tickets, hotels, um, tips and guidance in the destination you're traveling to and a bunch of other fun information. Once we're done with that, ChatGPT again will continue fine tuning the agent. And as soon as it's done, it's asking me another question about topics which I would want to avoid. So it's given me examples of political discussions and safety advice. I am going to keep everything on the table and continue with the creation. And after a bit of thinking, ChatGPT errors out. So I'll click the regenerate button and give it a second chance. It sometimes happens that ChatGPT just crashes, but doesn't happen too often. But I saw it happening a bit more often recently. Nothing that a quick refresh won't fix. Moving on, it seems like the wizard has completed and we have our GPT available for use. So we are invited to try it out in the playground on the right hand side. And I'll ask it to give me some ideas for my three week holiday to a hot place. And the suggestions it's given me are Bali, the Amalfi Coast in Italy, Costa Rica, the Greek islands and Marrakesh. I will go with Bali because I've never been there and see what it suggests. And it seems like it's doing quite a good job as a travel agent. As it's preparing me for the trip, it's telling me about the places I must visit and a bunch of other information. So I trust it to do its work well. But in the meantime, what I want to do is discover the configure tab of the GPT wizard. I see that we have the name, which is empty for some reason. So I'm going to fill it in with whatever GPT has suggested before, which was the globe trailer. And the avatar is in place. The description is there. The instructions, which to me looks like custom instructions, are there. And that's kind of the format that we would expect from custom instructions and all that priming and role assignment that we've played around with in the past. And then we have a couple of conversation starters, which I've mentioned a little bit earlier on in the video. Um, so each of the new GPTs that you create comes with five templates that you can use for starting a conversation. And in this case, it's going to be all obviously about traveling. And then at the bottom of the list, we see three more features, which is knowledge, capabilities and actions. Now, the first one, the knowledge one, allows us to 
upload files and we would probably use those files if they're not public or not really available for ChatGPT when it was training its model. So a couple of use cases that come to mind would be something work related, hopefully something that's not too private um, to the company. But if you're working with information that's shared within your team and is not too fragile, perhaps it's a good idea to create a GPT so that you have this kind of live documentation which you can share with your colleagues. The next one is the capabilities, which gives us web browsing, DALI and code interpreter. So the first ones are relatively obvious. So um, accessing the internet. Second one is generating images. And the third one, the code interpreter, allows us to generate code or tables or any technical documentation when talking to ChatGPT. So whenever it decides that there is some kind of mathematics or computing required, it can generate a script or a piece of code or other artifacts for us to use. And the last piece is actions. And actions is a bit more complex. It's similar to plugins in the past. So when we're having a conversation with our GPT, there might be a time when a specific sentence might trigger an action. For example, if you were to ask for the cheap cheapest flights to your destination, it might uh, launch an action to search Skyscanner and find the cheapest flights between your location and your destination. But we are going to have a separate video for actions because it is quite a deep subject and I think it deserves its own 10 or maybe 15 minutes. So that sums it up. We've had a look at a couple of GPTs. We've created our very own one for travel purposes. And we've had a look under the hood to see what actually hides underneath and what GPTs really are. My tiny little summary about the topic is that I don't think GPTs are specifically a brand new feature or anything revolutionary. I think, however, that they are a major step in terms of user experience. So if somebody's not an expert, unlike yourself, of course, in using ChatGPT, it might make it a lot easier to interact with it and to create new meaningful conversations specific to a subject that the user wants to talk about. So in the past, we would need to use custom instructions, which are slightly cumbersome and not as user-friendly. And now you can just use GPTs, which are fairly easy to use. You can generate them with a simple wizard, give them a nice icon to make them easier to find, perhaps even make some money on the side if your GPT turns out to be useful to others as well. And the one thing is definitely helping with is that you can enable a lot of the capabilities together. So web browsing, DALI and code interpreter at the same time, which wasn't the case in the past. So that's a step forward. In the next couple of videos, which I've already mentioned a couple of minutes ago, we will talk about a lot of the other features that have been presented in the Dev Day conference. So stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, and as always, like and leave a comment. Tell us how you're going to use GPTs and what kind of GPTs you'll create yourself. Looking forward to reading that, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.